Sudden in class, because it looks like the next up is Bard. The roaming performer, the dashing socialite, the jack of all trades, and master of... Well, honestly, they do often master something. That's the power of the Bard. You have tons of options, supporting everyone and being at least functional in most roles. The subclass you pick at level 3, known as a college, either makes you more versatile or gives you a role to excel at. To further delve into this, we'll start with mechanics that move to flavor and concept. Let's go! Bards have a decent HP with a D8 per level, and getting light armor is pretty good for a spellcaster. They can use simple weapons and a few martial weapons like the longsword. They're proficient in dexterity, charisma, and three skills of their choice. That's good, but it gets better. Your jack-of-all-trades ability lets you add half your proficiency to the rest of your skills. And fun fact, that includes initiative. That leaves you with no real weak spot on skills. And plenty of strengths too, because at 3rd and 10th level you get expertise, which lets you double your proficiency bonus on two skills, and makes the bard as overall skilled as they come. Now your level 6 ability, Counter Charm, is barely specialized, giving your allies advantage against fear and charm effects, but everything else follows that generally good and better as you level mold. Your Song of Rest lets you heal more in a short rest, Magical Secrets lets you grab spells from other classes, and their claim to fame of Bardic Inspiration. Not to be confused with the inspiration your DM gives you, Bardic Inspiration lets you give others a bonus die to add to a save, check, or attack of their choice. At first you get a few of these per day, but at level 5 you're filled on a short rest and the number's always growing. Jumping back to that part about stealing spells, the Bard is a full spellcaster, getting access to all levels of spells. Their list of options focuses on crowd control and support, especially enchantment. They even have an exclusive heal at level 9 9 and Power Word Heal, and 3 special enchantment spells. Compulsion lets you control enemy movement, Dissonant Whispers damages and scares, and Vicious Mockery is the one you're here for. You can use it infinitely, give the target disadvantage on their next attack, and you're physically hurting them with an insult. Killing someone with sass is something I can only dream of. That's honestly what a bard is to most people, a witty performer. They start with 3 instruments of their choice, they can use their instrument as a spellcasting focus, and many of their abilities make you perform while you're doing them. I just didn't mention it because no matter how much the handbook harps on, it's not actually required. Sure, they can use it as a spellcasting focus, or they can just use a component pouch. And while the flavor text rambles about a flute or whatever, the only actual restriction is that a few of the effects require some sort of sound in the show. Sing, whistle, ignore the music entirely. Variety is the spice of life, and most DMs are happy to let you reflavor, as long as you aren't changing how it actually functions. Speaking of changing how we function, at level 3, 6, and 14 you get unique college powers. I'll write them on the board as we go to keep track of them, and try to give you some ideas on how to reflavor things. In the beginning, we have creation, and try not to get a god complex as you literally speak things into being, glowing and humming with song. You start out with objects medium size or smaller, but your limit grows as you level. There is a limit on the gold price of each item, but it starts off big and gets removed at level 14, when you can start making multiple things at once. At level 6, you can start to animate objects with animating performance, making some oddly tough minions from anything around you. And again, don't get a god complex when you start breathing life into your figurines. Every bard gets a buff to their inspiration or a new way to use it. In this case, we get extra effects depending on how your ally uses it. Area damage if they use it while attacking, temporary HP if they use it on a save, or rolling the inspiration twice and using the high roll if it's for a check. It's interesting and decent, but not as thematic. Point still stands though, this bard is mastering the magic which gods use to create the world, and using it to form your own if only temporarily. They always have the right tool for the job, and augment their control of the battlefield with a minion. If any of that intrigues you, I highly recommend the creation bard. Honestly, it's one of my favorites. You can be anything from a sage with the words of a god to a busybody mom humming a tune as she whips up breakfast for the party, treating the whole adventure as a family road trip. Be a painter showing the world the wonders of imagination. There has to be sound in the performance for most abilities, which does prevent a mime, but not a clown. For all the bad rep they get, they're just another iteration of a traveling entertainer with wit and slapstick. And speaking of wit, eloquence. The eloquence bard is a common pick because it's basically just bard plus. You can use your inspiration on enemies to lower their saving throw, and later your allies can keep their inspiration if they used it and failed anyway. And by the end, you can make the inspiration jump to someone else if they used it and succeeded. Most of their abilities are inspiration focused Focused, but they also start off treating any 9 or lower on a deception or persuasion check as a 10. Throw on expertise and good luck failing. It's made even more useful at level 6, where you can magically make creatures understand you once a day. Eloquence is one of the two subclasses that just focuses on taking what you love about bards and doubling down, in this case on persuasion and inspiration. If that's what you love about bards, then you'll love this one. It covers pretty much anyone who focuses on speech, like a politician or a con artist or a negotiator. Since person who talks good can basically be anything already, I'd like to take a moment to defend the power of talking. Your mileage will vary on anything
anything charisma based depends on the DM and the campaign, but it's not just for intrigue focused adventures. Remember, to the average town, you're a group of strangers who stomped out of the woods armed to the teeth asking if anyone wants to pay them to kill, and depending on the party, dragging who knows how many monsters or curses around. Someone good at talking can be vital to your survival, especially if your savior act has unintended consequences, or your party tends to anger people. It's still very subject to your party playstyle, and thankfully the inspiration manipulation is good by itself, but don't write off the power of talking, even if your party is combat focused. But if skill's not enough for the situation, you can use College of Glamour for manipulation, by which I mean enchantment. Glamour focuses on charm and appearance, especially the appearance part. Using most of these gives you a vague, wondrous appearance. Whatever that means. For instance, you can burn a charge of inspiration to adopt that wondrous look and make your allies gain temporary HP and move on your turn. This works even if they can't see you, so I don't get the point of the fey eyeliner other than getting attention, I guess. That is the point of most of their abilities. At level 6, they can adopt the appearance and just cast command at will. Foes can try to resist, but only if they aren't already charmed. And you can use your third level ability to charm quite a few people at once, though they do have to watch you dance with sexy fairy magic for a minute, so it's useful but situational. The last thing you get is Unspeakable Majesty, a humbly named ability that can force foes to attack somebody else, which is good for you I guess, but they're just gonna punch the wizard instead. And granted, I'm not opposed to that, it's just kind of rude. If you're out here trying to be the flashiest part around, or just focus on fey redirection, point your attention to Glamour. It's not hard, they are trying to force you. After all, they're magicians, dancers, actors. Maybe your world has studios with different rooms to scry in at certain times for entertainment, and you are a game show host looking for new material. Or, and follow me here, maybe we think about a different type of attention-hungry performer. One who's a little less professional. The kind that would put themselves into a dangerous situation just for a later story time. Come on, you know you could draw a crowd with I got attacked by a cult of forbidden knowledge? 3am not bait featuring the wizard. And that's why your adventures keep getting bigger and more deadly. You got to keep people coming back, so hit that like and sub button and tell me some music artists you've been listening to lately. Comments are great for the youth. For a more traditional storyteller, try College of Lore. They're the kind that actually go to college, even more addicted to telling stories, but their own tale is often just a byproduct of finding and spreading someone else's. This level of learning comes out by gaining three extra skill proficiencies, with their last ability letting them use inspiration on themselves during skill checks. Right from the start, however, they can use their inspiration charges to rattle enemies, subtracting the roll from the check, attack, or damage roll. This one is the other bard plus, because at level 6 you get another magical secrets, letting you learn even more spells from other classes. This makes them even more customizable, and you'd be surprised how different one can feel just from adding revivify and wall of sand, or fireball and fly, and especially not having to wait till level 10. It gives you a chance to lean even further into your theme, or just show up some weaknesses. Lore bard is a wonderful choice if you want to crank that basic bard to its limit, and you can go basically any direction with them, but I personally recommend going against the bard stereotype, nor bards as professors, or researchers, or archaeologists. Ones who aren't here for the glitz and glamour, they're after the legend and knowledge itself. The wizard doesn't have to be the only educated caster, and the ones who are pushing the limit of a field are rarely in the spotlight. It just can't reach the cave they're in searching for an ancient legend, though a more direct way of learning an ancient tale is to just ask the people involved. The spirit bard is an occultist drawing on the power of the dead to bolster the living. Instead of an instrument, you can use all the classic tropes like crystal balls and cards and skulls as a focus, and eventually they add a d6 to the damage or healing of your spell when you do. You also get the guidance cantrip for free, with its range extended to 60 feet, calling on spirits for help. At level 6, your friends can help you channel, letting you temporarily learn a divination or necromancy spell from the ghost you summon. You can even grab spells from the other classes with this, with the spell level available depending on the amount of people helping. And I just have to say that I love how it includes the whole party. I understand why some people hate it, but I love it when the party is interdependent, and the theming is top tier. But you might be wondering where the inspiration ability is. Well, that would be a random chart of stories, each giving you cool effects like fire breath or everyone can teleport. You roll your inspiration dice to see what ghost pops up to tell you its tale, and until your next short rest you have that effect on hand. It's random, but you'll always find a use for most of these effects, and eventually you roll twice and take the better result. If the spirit bard's ghost whispering hasn't drawn you in already, I don't know what to tell you. I love how this one breaks the mold by encouraging you to ditch the loot, and you can make your performances from your base abilities all kinds of occult or esoteric things. But hear me out for a second. A puppet show with your spirits moving them or helping do the voices, or maybe use your candle to do shadow puppets on the wall. Look, I fully support you leaning into the spooky scary serious stuff. I just doubt you need to be told how when you're clutching a skull and calling up the dead. But if your campaign is more lighthearted, you can always go as something like a camp counselor telling tall tales, or an author bringing the characters in their head to life. 
I don't have a good transition to the next two. Swords and Valor are two melee focused parts, with Sword appearing to be a response to the College of Valor. Both have an extra attack at level 6 and proficiency with medium armor. The Sword Bard lets you specifically use scimitars, chooses to focus on single or dual wielding for bonus damage, and can use their weapon as a spell focus. For their inspiration modification, they can do a variety of special maneuvers. They either gain temporary AC, push the opponent, or deal damage to an adjacent target. They can eventually do a weak form of this without spending inspiration. They're meant to be a bard that focuses on martial offense, but despite their maneuvers being called a blade flourish, they don't actually require a blade. The sword bard is actually better when they start with their bow, then act as a secondary line of defense or tagging in when the front line needs a breather. This sort of self-sufficient savant was apparently more in line with what people were wanting, as it seems to be a direct response to the valor bard. The valor bard attempts to be more of a warrior poet, while sword is fully focused on offense and themselves, the valor bard keeps it simple. They use shields in any weapon, anyone who uses your inspiration can add it to their AC or damage, and at level 14 they can attack as a bonus action whenever they cast a spell. Simple, but effective, especially that inspiration mutation, which is a lesser version of the shield spell that you can give to an ally. This one is meant to be a more defensive and utility-based counterpart. You're still not going to be the main damage sponge, but you can hold your own as a backup, and being backup for everyone at once is part of a bard's main appeal. Plugging every hole that needs filling is kind of their thing. And don't forget that you've still got a better bow and full casting, so if you're looking for an offensive, more self-sufficient bard, Sword is your answer. If you're looking to keep your support focus, but just add some mainly to the mix, Valor might be for you. Now both of these will likely have their hands too full of weaponry for an instrument, but their performance just has to have sound and movement. You could be a tap dancer swinging a sword instead of a cane, or a pole dancer that ripped the pole out of the ground to beat people with, or even a cheerleader because they are way more buff than you think. High level dance requires strength, awareness, and balance, which can make the transition to combat surprisingly smooth. Unlike the transition to College of Whispers, but I adore this one so hear me out. They essentially get a psychic smite, starting with 2d6 but eventually growing to 8d6 of a very rare type of damage. And it's a good thing you get that damage burst too, as your level 6 ability lets you steal someone's shadow as they die and keep it on you. You can use it to turn into the person, and unlike other disguises, this gives you any knowledge they would tell an acquaintance. So not only can you learn the area or their basic life, but you get a bonus to passing yourself off as them because you know about them. Unfortunately, you do need a short rest to refresh it, much like your third level ability, forcing a creature you've talked to for a minute to make a save. If they fail, they're frightened of you or someone else of your choice for an hour. And better yet, if your attempt fails, they don't know you did anything. A lot of mind-affecting spells alert the target that you tried something, but this one doesn't. And your last ability is similar, this time taking an action and charming them for eight hours. They offer you any favors or gifts they would a close friend, obey you as long as they aren't at risk of injury, and only break the effect if you attack them or cast something else on them. And after that eight hours, they forget why they were afraid of you. They don't remember that you can charm them. If they're still useful, just come back tomorrow and do it again. This is one of the best charm effects, period. Of course, that is the issue. It's a charm, and everything is based on manipulation, which I adore, but it makes the whispers a bit more situational. Specialized for a bard is still more generalist than most, and you still have a giant array of spells and skill, but depending on your group, you might find the psychic burst damage to be the only consistent part. If you don't care and just want to be a social menace, Whisper is great. Go full-on assassin, infiltrating alongside the rogue with a party at your heels. Obviously, spies work wonders here, but I love the idea of running one who isn't actually trying to scare people. They just have a really intense expression. Or you can ignore the politics and just have them revel in causing fear. Though honestly, I love the reverse. Like a genuinely kind little traveling merchant. Struggling because she keeps accidentally using her terror abilities whenever she gets excited. And this is how the list ends. Not with a bang, but a whisper. If any of these interested you, a little word of advice. Find a way to indicate that people have inspiration. If you're in person, this could be a set of cheap T6s. Or candy that they're not allowed to eat until they use it. Or just some household item. After all, the biggest downside to inspiration is that people just forget they have it. If you're doing this online, talk with your DM. Most VTT programs have some sort of indicator or icon that you can snap on their picture as a reminder. And if Bard sounds cool but you're not sure this is for you, I'd suggest taking a look at the Rogue or Sorcerer next. Special thanks to my coffee supporters like Feral Goblin and Sergeant Daniels. Your kind donations fuel my equipment fund. Link in the description if you want to help, but I'm not big enough to put it in the video yet. Either way though, I'm here and free. Class dismissed.